Hello, and welcome to my video on Cycloalkane Nomenclature! Cycloalkanes are named just like normal alkanes. Use the exact same rules that I showed in my alkane video. If you haven't seen that, there's a link in the doobly-doo. This OCHEM series will not contain any of the quantum physics mumbo-jumbo, and will be completely problem-focused. Here's the background info that you will need. Cycloalkanes are alkanes that are in a ring. You throw cyclo in there to say that it's a ring. The subgroups are named the same way, with the same numbering rules. Keep in mind to number in the direction that gives you the lowest number to each address. There is only one major rule to remember when naming these things. If you have a chain and a ring, the one with more carbons in it is your parent chain. And that's all you need for the lecture part, so let's see how to do it. Here I have propane, butane, and pentane. Nothing new from the MEPI that I showed you before. Protane, propane has three carbons. One, two, three. Propane, butane, and pentane. You'll see butane as a square or as a diamond, which is just a square on its side. This is sort of introducing you to stereochemistry, where you'll start rotating molecules, but we're not quite there yet. So here are a bunch of examples that I drew for you from the problems that I've done. This here is ethyl cyclo pentane. It's a cyclopentane because it's a pentane. You have five carbons. One, two, three, four, five, and it's attached to an ethyl group. So that's ethyl cyclopentane. Coming over here, this here is 3-ethyl-1-1-dimethyl cyclohexane. This is not 1-ethyl-3-3. Three, three. Remember that you have to keep the numbers for each address as low as you can. So 1-1-3 has a lower number for the second possession, position than 1-1-3. One, one, so this is 1-2-3, 1-1-dimethyl. And here's your 3-ethyl. Here you have a example of, well, I'm talking about right here, this is kind of all jumbled together. This is 3-cyclobutyl pentane. The chain is longer than the ring, longer meaning it has more carbons in it, so that's your parent chain. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's a standard alkane, your normal pentane, and attached to the third carbon is a cyclobutane, so remember when you have your subgroups it becomes an aisle, so 3-cyclobutyl pentane. Uh, let's see if I got anything extra over here now. This one here is a cyclodecane with 10 carbons. Go ahead and pause the video and count them if you have extra energy today. And here's a more complex one. This is 4-isopropyl 1,1-dimethyl cyclodecane. I'm using more complex models in this video so that you can really understand it. So you name the number with the dimethyl group's carbon as number 1. So you can keep the number as 1,4 rather than 1,8 if you number in the other direction. So it would be 1,4 in this direction, but 1,8 in that direction. So you definitely want to keep those numbers smaller for each position. So you might be wondering, why isn't the isopropyl number 1? Why don't you name this as number 1? Well, if you name that carbon on the isopropyl as number one, you would end up with one four four because then this one would be your four, and you want the one one four rather than the one four four. So that's just keeping the numbers in each address as the lowest possible number. So by now you probably feel like we're beating a dead horse. If you do, you're good to go. If you don't, let's keep looking at some more. This here is 1,4-dimethyl cyclohexane. doesn't matter which methyl you make the number one on this. It will number the same way either way because it's symmetrical. There is a plane of symmetry right here. So that's 1,4-dimethyl cyclohexane. If you name this one, this would be 2, 3, 4. Or if you name this one, this would be 2, 3, and then 4. So it doesn't really matter. That's 1,4-dimethyl cyclohexane coming over here, you have a 1-methyl 3-propyl cyclopentane because there are 1, 
two, three, four, five carbons in there. So you count the number one carbon from the methyl because it's a simpler compound. Also because M comes before P, but you, you want to go with the simpler compounds. Down here is 3-cyclobutylhexane. Here the chain has more carbons than the ring, so you name this as an alkane. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons, and you want to label this way so that this is on the third carbon. If you name this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, that would be on the fourth carbon, and that's wrong. Don't label from this direction. Bad. Moving on to one more here. This is 1,3-dibromo-5-cyclohexane. And both of these models are acceptable. It's the same molecule, just rotated a little bit. This, this model here is rotated that way. Well, I guess this one is rotated that way. And that's what it would look like. So both of these are acceptable. It's the same molecule, but it's just turn around. And remember, keeping your numbers low in each position. So this would be 1, 3, if you consider it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, methyl. Um, if you label the other way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I guess it would still work. Um, so you just want to keep your numbers low when you're numbering these. So 1, 3, dibromo, 5, methyl, cyclohexane on that one. I think those are all the ones that I drew on this. Let's just double check. Yeah, there's there's nothing else on there. Uh, well, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. It is rather short, but it has everything you need. Um, if you have any other questions, shoot me an email. Thanks for watching. DFTBA.